she she had to come back because it didn't work at work she came back to the house it's a very you can you still have, you have access to chat to put on put the uh, live streaming thing there no yeah i have just started it in fact i'll put that now i think something is wrong with mine it's making a funny it's not very really, the sound is not yeah, am i talking yeah. about it or is it is it no no it, Am I sounding all right or is it breaking? It's breaking now. Oh my God. What am I going to do? Jim, where is your computer, Jim? Can you bring that down, please? Because this is giving some trouble that I don't know. I'm sorry, I have to ask you to bring it. I think my connection is un, uh, not stable, uh, Derek. You'll probably have to, because now I've connected to my hotspot. Uh, same and, here I did. Same here. It's... Yeah, and it's uh, thundering and raining. Last night it was raining. so. Mm, no, same here also. We're having a heavy shower outside. So. I'm having problems. With the, it's, uh, it looks like yours. There is static when you're speaking. There is static. I don't know why. Something, some wire yeah, is touching even you. I'm hearing all of you. I hear also. Oh my God! I might have to. Now it's clear. Yeah, but I'm hearing you because so it must be something to do with with my thing. No, no, it's from. Oh no. पहले <laughs> 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 Where is every? Uh, I think. Uh, did you? Uh, did you get Maria? I saw her, and then. There is the other chap, Noor. Uh, no, what's his name? Mohammed Noor. No, so. Uh, I thought if that if that lady if that um, if, um, if what's her name? Uh, uh, that Doctor Walid is there. You can. He's from Egypt. Shall I allow him uh, in? I I thought of this. What's her name? Shall I that, uh, allow him in? Shall I allow him in? I don't know what. Yeah, there Derek, are. Can you people, hear? There, yes, there yes, are I can. A few hear. people. I thought that if that uh, if uh, what's her name, uh, Vishnu came in. She knows who these are because there's not any. There is there is Noor. Vishnu is there. Uh, Okay, then you can let. Wait, I'm just going to see whether I can change my thing because. Okay, one minute. I'll. I'll. Dave, you got the host now, so I can go ahead and come in. Yes. Yes. Oh, this is uh, uh, this is <laughs> not Vishnu. <laughs> We got the wrong Vishnu. <laughs> It's not the correct. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> you can stay on. Is any disuja? Acha, she the same Vishnu Devi only. Same, same name, yeah. Hmm. One minute. I'll just message her and see if. I saw uh, Dr. Wali. That what happened to him? I saw his name, and he was. We got five minutes to go. Also, I don't know. I can't see our speakers. Maria also I saw, and then she doesn't seem. To, uh, that I'm admitting. Shall I uh, admit yeah, Wali? Yeah. Wali? Yeah, I think we'll admit them because. He's the same person, no? Wali Kamal. Uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, same person from the picture.
Professor Walid, can you hear us? No, I don't think he's. Uh, yeah, no. Yes, ask him to unmute. Yeah. Uh, Professor Walid, can you hear us? Can you unmute yourself? Is it possible? No? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, right. Good. Okay. Yes. Vishnu says. Yes, we can, we can yeah, hear you. Vishnu says she's online, but I have told her what name. Let me see. No, I think she also has issues with. Uh, Achha, Vishnu internet. Devi. Vishnu Devi, she's locked in. Us. Vishnu Devi, okay. Professor Walid, welcome. You're coming in from Egypt. Thank you welcome. for joining us. Welcome, welcome Professor Walid. And they're not at all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, the professors. Thank you. I am honored to join this meeting with you. It's okay. <laughs> okay, not to worry. Okay, then. Okay, then. You're welcome. How is the situation in um, Egypt? For physical therapy, uh, we uh, make uh, some procedures. This from Ministry of Health. Uh, um, firstly, isolation and the uh, all recommendations to stay home uh, okay. uh, uh, and isolation no physical therapy uh, okay. regulation uh, no mm -hmm. visits for uh, outpatient clinics so uh, we uh, as the physiotherapy and rehabilitation providers we decided uh, some uh, solutions to uh, to give uh, or provide our services to uh, our patients. Uh, firstly, uh, rule of telerehabilitation, and okay. some uh, some of us were, and some of us work in inpatient in hospitals like uh, university hospitals. Uh, some of us join uh, join the ICU uh, and okay. have uh, to cooperate with the medical treatment to uh, fast or fast of recharge or fast of uh, weaning of uh, from uh, mechanical ventilation. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll discuss all this, uh, Professor Walid, because uh, in every country- I, I have, uh, be, yeah. Yes, I prepared some, uh, some uh, important points for me. Uh, rule yeah. of telerehabilitation during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so tele what we'll do is, yeah, what we'll do is we'll have a general discussion on first the ethical issues and then we'll focus because this is going uh, uh, for two sessions, even next week. So yes, okay. we'll take uh, all those points, education and telehealth, uh, we'll try and include it next uh, next time. Or if we have time this time, we'll include it, if that's okay. Okay, okay no problem, no problem. Uh, uh, Professor Prangika uh, from uh, Sri Lanka, welcome. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you for joining. Thank you for inviting. We're just waiting for uh, our uh, all our speakers uh, because uh, we have apparently we have a very big uh, uh, a lot of people have shown interest. So we want, uh, and this uh, this Zoom chat can hold only five hundred people. So we want all our speakers in first before all the participants come in. Uh, what happened to Dr. Derek, uh, Dr. Russell? Well, no, I'm, I, I'm here, I'm here. Well, I, I just- I'm here, I, I just switched off my- yeah, just uh, see camera. the other, other uh, panelists have come in. Yeah, I am seeing, but I can't uh, find Vishnu. Vishnu is supposed my, to be there. Is my voice all right? No, it's echoing it's now. It's echoing put off one. No, no, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, that. yeah. Just switch off the volume on the second one. It will be better. Yeah. Is it working? Okay, uh, we we don't have Professor Mahmoud from Malaysia and Professor Saud from uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, Professor John Stevens, Maria, 
You can open the layer too. And Canada yeah. also. You don't want to be. Your phone is all turned up and you can see the laser. Okay, in case I need that, I'll do it. Okay, uh, um, uh, uh, Dr. Should we admit everyone? No, but where is better? Our speakers are not there. Uh, Derek. No, they may be. That's why no, I wanted how will that you Vishnu. identify them? Where Vishnu is the Vishnu? Is not there. No, Vishnu is supposed to be there, but we can't see her because I don't know the numbers are jumping also, no? Any of uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Walid, Professor Walid, I'm Russell D'Souza from uh, the um, uh, the um, the chair for today from the UNESCO. Um, welcome, and your Dr. Surangika, is that right? Surangika. Surangika. Yeah. Could you could you unmute yourself? Or I'm trying to unmute. Okay. I think they can. Dr. Yes. Surangika, can you tell me how to pronounce your surname? I'm, uh, it's Vadu Godipiti. It's a really long name. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I can't see our other speakers. Even our UK speaker is not there. Well, we'll have to start if they don't uh, come. But I'm wanting that Vishnu. Your Stephens. Sorry? Dr. Yeah, John Stevens is not there. Then Professor Mohammed is not there. No, Dr. Wait, Saul. I saw. Maria I was there, but I don't know. I, uh, she, I don't know what happened. Dr. Maria. Yeah, she was there initially. No, I think we'll admit all, and then we can bring them up because you can search from the people who enter. But, but what, about the this, there is, okay, what about this? What about uh, this Vishnu? She's got Vishnu, the doctor. She, Huh? She's supposed to be in the waiting room, but no, I but can't. He, he, she's going to. She, she's got to uh, present. So if you. No, she's online. She's telling me I'm there as Vishnu Devi, but I can't see her name. She's so she out. must be logged on some other computer that has. Uh, I mean, the name is not there. She's. I don't know. Yesterday too, we had problems with her. And, uh... Yeah. I think you can admit, uh, Derek, go ahead and admit everyone and because then we... 300 are there, that will also take time for them too. No, okay. no, I'm worried whether our speakers won't uh, get placed. That's the only problem. That's why I wanted to get the speakers yes. in place. No, no, we'll admit them and I'll shut the waiting room the minute we touch 400. Okay. So we have 100, uh, this thing. Okay. Hmm? But I don't, I saw new, I saw this gentleman uh, uh, Zulki, what Noor Zulki, he was there earlier. He was there first actually, but I can't find. Okay, do whatever you want. No, we'll hold the waiting room again after five, ten minutes. No, yeah, yeah, do it. Uh, then we can get because see. then people will get little. I'm admitting everyone. So by the time we start with the intros. The intros. No, there are two who oh, Vishnu Devi, but same ID, same. Don't know. You've admitted? Oh, they're coming yeah. in. Okay. All right. So by, uh, then we can make out from the names. Yeah. I saw uh, Mohammed Nur Zulfi bin Mohammed. I saw him there, but I was waiting for this. I don't know how we are going to find this. Yeah, now. Professor Veera Ragwa is there. He's there. There are two. Uh, Kangavel, Veera Ragwa Perumal. Kangavel. Yeah, Perumal. Yeah, that's very. Yeah, yeah, call him in. Wait one minute. I'll ask him to unmute. And, and uh, Poo Vishnu Devi, both are uh, 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 two. Uh, no, that seems to be the they, same login. I think she must be the one on one person only. No, no, Vishnu, no, now we can see you. I can see Vishnu and I can see someone else with Poo Vishnu Devi. Uh, Poo Vishnu Devi. Devi is her, her in, initial name, Poo Vishnu Devi. Poo Vishnu Devi. No, but I, I Vishnu, can see can you hear on us? that login. I think 
Oh, okay, no, I understood, Derek. I think Poo Vishnu has shared her ID with uh, uh, Professor John Stevens because I can see him. His message displaying on the board that is Maria, she cannot unmute herself. Okay, okay, okay. there are two. Okay, is I think the second one may be. All right, okay, understood. Understood. Did you see? I, she, she has shared her link with uh, Professor John, I think. Stephen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I'll, I'll just rename if possible. And that's, uh, do, that's uh, Dr. Professor uh, Perumal, thank you for joining us from Canada. Thank you, Dr. Mary. We were, we were searching for you, but we couldn't find you. So now we. we I've we, renamed we, him, so. Yeah. Okay. There will be oh, Maria, we can see you. We can see you. Okay. okay. Who, who and uh, we will unmute you. The thing is, you entered as Poo Vishnu Devi because uh, she gave you her ID. So we couldn't find you. You are not. That makes a bit of confusion. We will not do yeah. that. Mm. Okay, Professor South is here. Professor South yes. from Saudi Arabia. Yes. We can see you. We'll we'll unmute all of you. Yeah. Thank you. Wait, while and, uh, Professor John Stephen, we can see you. We will unmute you. Mm, we'll have to. So there is Dr. Surangi Kals there. Where I just saw her. No, she's. Uh, Sarangika, then uh, uh, Veera Raghav Permal is there, and uh, who's the... Professor John is also there, you'll have to, I, I will ask you to unmute uh, Professor John, no, you can yeah, unmute we yourself. That. We'll do that, uh, who's, I'm just yes, wanting to make sure... Professor you. John, thank you for joining, can you hear us? Yes. I yes, can just can. about hear you, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Oh, okay, great. Professor Maria, we can uh, see you and hear you. Thank you. One message from Dr. Deepak Joshi, sir. He cannot hear. It's not from who? From Dr. Deepak Joshi. That message is on the screen itself now. Dr. Yeah, no, that would be there, uh, the, something with their computer, madam. Yeah, okay, what, uh, now from, from Kenya, Dr. Naomi. Can you see Naomi is there? there? She's there? We'll just search for her. If they log in with a different ID, then we'll have to. I can see her. Vishnu Devi, she is there. No, Vishnu Devi is there. I'm just checking the names uh, who are here. All the rest, except from Africa, from Kenya, Dr. Naomi Kingau. Uh, now, what about Professor Mahmoud from Malaysia? Is he there? Yeah, he was here earlier. I saw his. Uh, I don't know what's happened to him in here. One request for Dr. Derek D'Souza, those uh, they are displaying the message that they cannot hear us, we can message them in return, then they have to manage from their side only. They have to unmute or... Yes, ma'am, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, Vishnu? Yes, sir. Uh, there is a YouTube link I have put in the chat box. Yes, sir. Uh, you can take that and put it into your physiotherapy groups because yes, already sir. we are 424 and 96 in the waiting room. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we we'll so, have to close it because it holds only for uh, 500. No, we, we have got uh, the live, uh, it's, it's on YouTube, live streaming. So yes. please put that out so that you can give it to everyone. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, we'll do, we'll do. so tell them to join from there if they can't. Yeah. yeah. Fine, sir. We'll do. So hmm? now we are left with. Uh, Professor Mahmoud from Malaysia. I'm not able to locate him. Hmm. He was there. I did see him earlier, but anyhow. Uh, Professor Mahmoud, if you're there, please uh, write in the chat box. Please let us know if you're there. From Malaysia. From uh, Malaysia. Uh, Yes, um, Mohamed Noor Zulfriki uh, Bin Mohamed from Malaysia. If you're there, please uh, let us know that you're there. Sir, I'll call him and ask him. The message okay. we are saying, the displaying message that the host itself has unmuted, they cannot hear because the host has blocked. So no, ma'am, we have kept people as uh, muted. Unmuted. They can hear only. They are trying to 
speak, we are not allowing them to speak. We, we don't, I mean, not, we don't want, want them to all speak. to keep it muted. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got to be muted. But they, they cannot hear what they are displaying. Well, that that is it means there's something wrong with their line. That's what it means. Oh, no. Okay. I can hear. Uh, let, let, let us start. We're already a few minutes gone because uh, we're trying to wait for some of these speakers. Look, um, a very good morning, afternoon, evening, and night. I'm, I'm Professor Russell D'Souza from Melbourne, Australia. I'm the chair and head of the education department of the UNESCO Chair in Bioethics, right? And uh, I'm delighted to welcome all of you for the 23rd webinar in the series of the UNESCO Chair. We have uh, been having this webinar since April. Uh, it was under a program called Medical Ethics in the wake of the pandemic. And we've had uh, um, uh, many and covered most of the disciplines of uh, uh, the healthcare professionals, besides doctors and psychiatrists and family physicians, pharmacology, pharmacy, um, nursing, and now, of course, it's, uh, I'm delighted that uh, today and for the next um, webinar 24, which will be on the 13th, we are going to be focusing on the um, um, physiotherapists who are part of the allied health. And indeed, it's particularly important here because the UNESCO chair in bioethics we have a program on, uh, on bio, um, uh, physiotherapy um, at the bioethics. Uh, and we have a, a, a program with a number of uh, units and so forth. And um, uh, as part of our allied health program. Now, it's important because as you know, we are working in unusual times. Things are challenging. And all of us from the healthcare professionals are dealing with challenges all the time in trying to um, combat to this um, pandemic, caring, bringing um, uh, the, uh, the care for, for the patients and their families. Of course, it's very uh, important here because this is probably the first time or not in a long time that the world together is facing this pandemic, developing, developed, rich, poor, we're all in this, pro uh, in this together. And one of the important aspects that come from this is solidarity, right? And you'll see for us here today, we have across in, in, from the physiotherapy discipline part of the allied health, we have across the world from, um, from the developed parts to um, the developing parts and including, I think we should be having uh, from Africa to here. So we have the Middle East, the uh, Asia, the United Kingdom, uh, North America, and so forth. So this is important because uh, all of us, all of you are doing, um, working in your own, in your domains uh, with physiotherapy, but what we're going to learn here is how you're facing this around the world and how, uh, how this pandemic is dealing with you, uniquely with each one of you. But importantly, while doing this, we come across dealing with ethical issues, besides, of course, your clinical work. And from that point, we want to take this, uh, look at, the, uh, at particularly the ethical challenges that you all are facing and how you're dealing with this, not only from clinical work, not only from acute to rehab, but also in your teaching, in your uh, students and, and so forth. But we're going to do this in stages. 
So I wanted uh, to introduce Professor Mary Matthew is my co-chair, but she is, she's uh, going to be the moderator today. And uh, Professor Colonel, Professor Derek D'Souza is also, uh, who's here, is also a moderator. And he will be looking after the chat box, the questions and so forth. And together, uh, and I will be there uh, alongside with our team. And we're going to be taking you through this in the next 120 minutes or so. Uh, Dr. Mary has got, you've all given your questions. Some of you might have not yet given it, but we have put this together to come out with um, some directions, a slate of questions that we will try to, which will try to cover the different areas, some of it today and some of it uh, uh, in the coming week. So that's what I want then to also acknowledge, and uh, we have an international co uh, uh, committee that has been putting this. Remember, this is the 24th, this is almost six months. Every Sunday, this has been happening. Last Sunday was, the last two Sundays was an extremely interesting, uh, where, where we had the interfaith and religious uh, leaders and science combining together to look at uh, how, uh, what advice they could give in mitigating uh, the impact of COVID on the community. So we had a very two deeply enriching um, webinars. Now, so our, uh, our committee, we have got, uh, and I think they're all here, uh, Dr. Pinsey, uh, um, this, uh, Dr. Shabir is here from Canada. We have also um, uh, Baroness Finlay uh, from United Kingdom, um, uh, Professor Stacy Gallen from United States, Dr. Professor Joe Taunton from the University of Florida, um, and uh, uh, Des Cahill, who's here from um, from you know from the unit from Melbourne, but also from uh, the RMIT University in Melbourne, um, who else principality. And uh, uh, Animesh Jain from Professor Animesh Jain. So we have this, uh, who have been putting and taking this through together. Now, today I want to also introduce to you, we have uh, uh, for this specific uh, to um, uh, the webinar or the uh, international panel discussion, I'm going to introduce to you two, uh, co uh, the convener and the co-convener. The convener we have, I want very happy and very delighted to introduce our convener for today is Professor Dr. Neelam Mishra. Uh, she, she is there. She is the vice chancellor of, uh, of uh, the Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences, which is a, a university in, uh, in India, Maharashtra in India. And uh, she heads the program the uh, the Allied Health Bioethics Program of the UNESCO Chair in from the, in the Indian program. Professor Mary Matthew heads the whole uh, Indian program, and she's also part of the education. Professor Derek is also the head of training and curriculum implementation for the large program that has over eighty five centers in 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 the Indian program. Okay, so Dr. Neelam Mishra is uh, the, um, the head of the Allied Health Program. And then we have uh, Dr. Puvishnu Devi, who is the Dean um, of Academics for Physiotherapy. And she's a co-convener. And I'm going to briefly, uh, before we start, uh, uh, before I hand it over to Dr. Uh, Professor Mary Matthew, I'm going to ask um, your convener, Professor Dr. Neelam Mishra, uh, to say a few words on this um, as we progress into the, uh, the webinar looking at allied health, but in particularly in physiotherapy. And after that, I will ask Dr. Vishnu to, to also uh, say a few words. Okay, over to you, Professor Neelam Mishra. But thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, sir. 
good morning good afternoon good evening to everybody respected dr rasel de suja sir the pioneer of bioethics program in india with missionary zeal respected dr derek de suja esteemed dr mary matthew madam dr pu vishnu devi learned resource persons participating delegates friends ladies and gentlemen i deem it my great pleasure in extending a very warm welcome to esteemed dignitaries and all of you in my official capacity as the national head of bioethics program in india for allied health sciences to this notable webinar on all important theme titled ethical issues faced by physiotherapists globally in responding to covid-19 pandemic it is a realized matter material reality that covid-19 pandemic has taken the world by storm and has jolted it totally the impact is huge and gigantic on all spheres of life to the extent that any and every meaningful activity has come to a stand still the concerns and the challenges that it has raised in the context of care and cure are huge and daunting in character the nature of the dealing that is required on the said account has brought to fore the various chinks in the armaments and armory that the world has at its disposal it is equally true that entire undertakings by the health team as a whole in tackling the malady is facing in and out several ethical challenges as well be it in the form of experimental trials for search of vaccine be it in the form of protective equipments extendable to health care be it the consideration of public health and balancing there too with any and every situation and study in cooperation of preventive curative and rehabilitative domains of health care there into operational reality in the inequity in resources the paucity the scarcity there too is yet another dimension which has baffled the entire man and mankind the mortality the morbidity the disease burden and the socio economic impact and the various other sociological considerations blended there too pose a big challenge which have baffled all of us uh, as the search of solution there too is not easy and is eluding as far it is in this context the entire effective functioning of healthcare team including the personnel from allied health sciences in the category of nursing staff paramedical workers and physiotherapists also need to be redefined in a real sense with strategic modalities to be evolved for the mitigation of the ethical challenges that are raising their heads and at every step in out of this realization rigidly or tightly rightly you can say as thought appropriate no, no, no. department of education unesco chair no, no, no. the stewardship for dr rasel de suja sir in company of eminent allied well meaning experts to invoke various thematic topics for deliberations and discussions through series of webinar to bring into focus the problem that have arisen and also the strategic modality for mitigation of the same in the interest of men and mankind it is in the continuation of said series that the theme undertaken for today is apt relevant and i am sure the way of the learned deliberations today out of the various inputs that would be provided by learned resource persons would definitely bring into focus the challenges that the covid pandemic management has raised before the physiotherapist as a part of healthcare team and way ahead for ensuring that they are appropriately tackled i record my thankfulness and gratitude to all the learned resource persons and with profound sense of thankfulness for professor dr rasel de suja sir i have great pleasure in welcoming all of you in this to this erudite webinar thank you very much sir thank you uh, dr person in indonesia now before i get uh, uh, dr vishnu uh, the the dean of physiotherapy I'm going to introduce to you a very distinguished panel of international panel that are going to take you uh, have the discussion today. So let me start with uh, we have with us Dr. Uh, Viruragu Permal, who comes to us from the University of Alberta in Canada, and then I have uh, uh, introduced to you Dr. Walid Kamal. Abdul Basit, who comes to us, uh, he's an associate professor of physical therapy at uh, in Cairo University from Egypt. So let's have 
Uh, Walid, put up your way out so people know you. Uh, Dr. Walid? Just yes. wave your hand. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And then uh, I want to, I'm delighted to introduce to you Dr. Uh, Saud Al Subali from Saudi, Saud from Saudi, yes, Dr. Saud. Can you put your hand up? Yes. Thank you very much for all yes. to see you. He's the vice dean of the Department of Physical Therapy and Health Rehabilitation in, in, um, uh, in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I then have, uh, um, I'm delighted to, to bring to you Dr. Uh, Surangika, who comes to us from the University of Peridinia in Sri Lanka. And uh, we also have Dr. Maria Jinda, Jindani. Uh, Dr. Maria, she comes, she's an associate professor of, uh, in the Department of Physiotherapy at the Sage GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, which has a unit of the UNESCO chair. They are part of our program, as you know, um, um, and uh, I'll then go on with great delight to introduce to you Dr. John Stevens, who is a senior lecturer in the physiotherapy department of the University of Sutherland in the United Kingdom. Can you put your hand up, uh, John? So that good evening. Can... Good evening. Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, welcome. should I say. Thank you. And it's a good night for me in Melbourne. Uh, I'm right <laughs> down under all of you, okay? And now, then we have, uh, uh, do, where is uh, Dr. Mohamed Nur Zulki, uh, uh, Zulfi? Where is that? I, ju I just saw him here. He was the, he's there, I think. Yes. Um, anyhow, uh, Dr. Mohamed Nur. Uh, yes, he's from Kuala Lumpur, uh, from Utah University, who is also Utah University is also a program that we have a, a, a center of the UNESCO chair with Professor Deva as the head of the program at Utah University. And finally, we have, and I'm looking for Dr. Naomi Kingau from the University, Moi University in Kenya and East Africa. Uh, Dr. Vishnu Devi, you'll have to identify where she is. She's probably in in the in this uh, here. But uh, if if uh, Dr. Naomi, if she if, can raise uh, her hand, then uh, that would be good. If you hear us, please come into the. Uh, Just uh, raise, raise your hand. hand. Click on the uh, raise hand button, please, yes. and we'll find where yeah. you are. I'll send a, a WhatsApp message to Poo Vishnu Devi or someone. So or you can just type a hi in the chat box as well. Yeah, so we can identify you and uh, and get you up out here. So with that, we have um, eight countries. Your uh, your panel panelists, are very distinguished um, physiotherapists. Professors and uh, and lecturers and so forth from around the world who are here uh, to take on this program. Um, so before I hand you over to our distinguished moderator, uh, let me ask Dr. Poo Vishnu Devi, who is the dean for, of ac uh, academics at the Krishna Institute of Medical Science. So she heads the um, bioethics, a physiotherapy bioethics program. So, Dr. Devi, or uh, Purushna Devi, can I uh, uh, hand for a few minutes? Can you, uh, before we start, I'll, I'll yes, sir. hand over to you. Yeah. Vishnu, one moment before you start. Uh, can you unmute uh, Professor Mahmoud Noor's um, video and mic have been dis disabled, so he's unable to uh, to see. To see, we can't see him or hear him. Dr. Derek, can you take care of that, please? Thank you. Dr. Uh, Dr. Mohammed. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I just uh, saw me a little while ago. Hmm. Mohammed Aswan? No. No, oh, his name is Mohammed Noor, N O H Zul, Zulfikri, bin, bin Mohammed. 
Okay, uh, I think uh, Dr. Puvushnu, you can go on until uh, we identify Dr. Mahmud. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Puvishnu Devi, Dean Academics, Physiotherapy, Queen's University, India, and Head of Physiotherapy Biotics Program of the UNESCO Chair in Biotics. I'm delighted to co convene this international panel discussion of the Education Department of UNESCO Chair in Bioethics. Physiotherapy is primarily concerned with activities of daily life, which in turn improve the quality of life. In the pandemic, physiotherapists under the Allied Health banner have and continue to play an important role from critical care to rehabilitation of COVID patients. In this webinar on ethical issues faced by physiotherapists, during the COVID-19 pandemic will be discussed by the distinguished panel of physiotherapists from all the continents on their encounters during the COVID-19 pandemic. From the COVID ward, ICU, community setup, teaching in colleges, to the impact on health of physiotherapists among the clinicians, teachers, and students. There have been little discussion on the ethical issues transcended by physiotherapists professional in their work in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. The UNESCO Chair in Bioethics have a physiotherapy bioethics program. The Department of Education, UNESCO Chair in Bioethics has been organizing these international panel discussions with the various disciplines of healthcare professionals. I'm delighted that the UNESCO Chair decided to give an opportunity for all to learn of the ethical and clinical issues that physiotherapists are dealing with in their contribution to the caring of COVID pandemic on the eve of World Bioethics Physiotherapy Day that is being celebrated on 8th September around the world. Findings of the JAMA study show from post-COVID discharge patients, physiotherapists make an important contribution for pulmonary complications improving the exercise tolerance and quality of life. This webinar will enlighten all participants on the physiotherapist role in clinical and academic areas during COVID-19 pandemic in the varying roles across the regions globally. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vishnu. I'm actually, I, I meant, meant to mention uh, that Interestingly, we brought this uh, our 23rd, 23rd and 24th webinar um, uh, dedicated to physiotherapy, the discipline of physiotherapy. And I'm also delighted that it coincides with World Physiotherapy Day that is being uh, celebrated around the world day after tomorrow on, on the 8th of September. So this is very apt. And we look forward uh, to um, deliberations and understanding and taking and appreciating the role that the discipline of physiotherapists are playing in this pandemic where we are all together trying to going through this and we'll come out of it also together. So with that, I will ask Dr. Mary Matthew to take over the, uh, the moderation. She has been moderating 20, 20 uh, 22 uh, and now she goes on to this. So well, thank you very much, Dr. Mary, for taking on this role. Thank you, Dr. Russell, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all uh, who have participated. I wish to tell all our panelists and our participants, we have 1,500 uh, participants who are registering. So we, uh, we are unable to take everyone in on the Zoom uh, platform because uh, the number here is only for 500. We have shared the, you, uh, Dr. Derek has shared the YouTube link. Uh, so if you want to uh, share it with your, your friends or your faculty, please do so. They can join via YouTube. Now, I just want it's, to- It's uh, live stream so they can have the same thing. Uh, uh, they can avail of everything uh, through the uh, live stream through the YouTube, you can see on top it's live stream. Derek has put put out the uh, link. Please uh, share that link with all your colleagues, so we will have all of them taking part 
uh, in this program. Right. Uh, so I just want to uh, warn all of you. Uh, it's it's really it's raining here at my place, and the internet connection is unstable. So suddenly, if you see me uh, going off air, then uh, Dr. Derek will come in and rescue to the rescue. So don't worry about it. So we, uh, this uh, this webinar will go on. Will uh, will continue now. What I'd like to request to all the panelists is please keep your videos on, and uh, um, but you can mute your microphone so that we can uh, save on the bandwidth so that everyone can see you, because there has been a time where we have missed a panelist because uh, uh, you know the the panelist was uh, the video was off. So please keep your videos on, so that everyone can see you. So. Um, uh, Professor Saud, I think you'll also have to do that because we can't see you. The remaining participants, I request you all to please switch off your video and to uh, mute yourself because we're trying to save on bandwidth. So uh, I thank you for that. And if you have any questions, please put it in the chat box and we will try to address it. So to the panelists also, if you think you can uh, address the questions also in the chat box, please go ahead and do so. So uh, this is the first time we are having a, a, a webinar where we have such large numbers. We've not had it. We've been conducting this for, uh, the, med uh, for the doctors, the nurses. Uh, we've done all different kinds of webinars, but this is the first time we are seeing unprecedented numbers that too from uh, uh, the healthcare group that, uh, who belong to the physiotherapy fraternity. So it's really heartening to see this. And thank you, all of you, for joining in. So, um, uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, so I request uh, uh, if you can mute your microphones, that'll be good because a lot of uh, background, uh, there's a lot of background noise. So, um, so, um, so, um, what I'd like to do, we are going to have this the session uh, in two weeks. So this week, we're just going to address all the challenges that are faced by physiotherapists around the world. And we have, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, panelists from different parts of the world. So we'll do that in the next week, probably. Uh, we will uh, discuss on the issues of education and uh, physiotherapy and uh, government policy is something that is very interesting and that we'd like to discuss. So let me start with Dr. Avira Raghavan from um, Dr. Veera Raghavan from uh, Canada. So you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you. So um, uh, the questions will probably be the same for all our panelists. So you are to, uh, you're, uh, you're coming to us from Canada. Yeah. And, yes, and you represent uh, uh, the private or the uh, government organization in terms of physiotherapy. So you can tell us a little bit about yourself. And what are the challenges that uh, physiotherapists are currently facing with this COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, thank you. It's good morning from Canada. Um, um, thank you all uh, for attending this uh, fantastic webinar. First of all, I like to thank Dr. Russell, uh, Dr. Mary, Dr. Derek, Dr. Neela Misra, Dr. Poosni Devi uh, for the opportunity given to me to, to be part of this UNESCO webinar in this pandemic situation. Thank you all. Um, I'm, I've been a physiotherapist more than 10 years in Canada. I moved from uh, India. I work uh, in both the uh, government sector as well as a hospital, so multi-speciality multi hospital, University of Alberta Hospital. I've been working as a casual uh, physiotherapist. I've been working in two different physio clinics. Uh, you know, in, uh, in, in Canada, the physiotherapists do work in the hospital settings and rehab hospitals, like subacute care hospitals, nursing homes and uh, home care settings, as well as the private clinics, okay? Um, in, in like, except the nursing homes, most, mostly the nursing homes and private clinics are, are mostly the private sectors. All other, like all other hospital settings, including the, little bit of nursing homes and home care are fully uh, government facilities and it's fully free of care. Uh, only in private sector, uh, they have to pay a little bit. 
and that too also in uh, private uh, clinics. Uh, some clinics do have Alberta Health Services fundings as well. Um, so um, uh, that's a little bit about my background. Um, then let's get into the topic, of course. Um, uh, in in Canada, I, I like to start with some statistical data in the Canada. Um, so in Canada, like it's a it's a very big country, but we have small population. It's only we have like about 37 million people, which is very low as compared to India and China and other other part of the world. Um, we have about 10 provinces and three territories, of course. So far, the total number of uh, COVID cases uh, are about 131,000. Um, then we got good recovery rate. Uh, we got uh, 116,000 people got recovered. Uh, but unfortunately, we got about 9,000 people uh, lost in our country. For about small country, 37 million people, this 9,000 uh, loss of lives is very, very important and very huge. Um, Alberta, uh, which is one of the provinces. I live in capital city, Edmonton in Alberta. In Alberta, recently the curve has been increasing. Uh, every day the number of cases have been increasing and the we got the summer, July and August. Now the schools are opened and it's been very challenges uh, uh, for the entire province uh, because of uh, this, this um, you know, relaunching strategies, of course. The government of Canada, as well as the government of Alberta and other uh, provincial governments, territorial governments have been taking fantastic steps. You may have been heard about all those, uh, you know, strategies the government has been taking. So they have been taking fantastic steps to control our uh, situation, of course. They are making the uh, public like uh, at, the, at the beginning, uh, uh, Prime Minister and Premier and Chief Medical Officers of uh, Canada, as well as the province, have been uh, giving an update every day, a couple of times in a day. Um, coming to the ethical issues uh, faced by physiotherapists in Canada, like so I'm going to talk about like those principles, for four principles, autonomy, beneficence, and mal malfeasance, and justice, of course. See, I do, uh, as I mentioned, I do work in private as well as uh, hospital settings. So uh, here the patients will be given uh, lots of autonomy. Uh, with, that means we need, as a physiotherapist, we need to get uh, informed consent from the patient to treat the patient. The patient has a right to ask, accept or refuse the treatment. Um, so in the hospital settings, um, we usually have like uh, patients referred to us uh, from the doctors, sometimes from the family, sometimes even self-reference or uh, the team members like uh, occupational therapists and nurses. Uh, so once we get the referral, we go and see the patient. The first thing we do is asking the patient whether you are willing to work with me. And if they refuse, what we, could, what we could do is we motivate and encourage, we explain why it is needed and what happens if, if they don't get the physiotherapy. Because in the hospital settings, they're likely to develop like pneumonia and bedridden complication. Actually, patients will get weaker and weaker after coming to the hospital settings. So we always encourage those patients to move around. We don't want them to be in the bed. Professor Permal, uh, can you put this in the context of the pandemic now, COVID pandemic? So like in, 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 in this situation, yes, the autonomy is not changed, okay? But the thing is, uh, we, we, uh, we restrict their uh, treatment uh, session within the, within the room if they become asymptomatic or if they become positive. As long as they're not if they are allowed to come out of the uh, room when we mobilize the patient, provided they put the mask once they leave the room, okay? So we treat the patient inside the room mostly when they become asymptomatic, when they become symptomatic and positive, and we take all the precautions, of course. So before and after entering the uh, room, we uh, sanitize and we take all PPEs and every PPE is available, mask and goggles and gowns, everything is available. It's, it's been a fantastic uh, supplies uh, given, given to us uh, from the government, of course. 
um, the the thing is in the hospital we it's it's man it, it, so we do have our own body add her with those uh, policies and guidelines so one of the policies is mask is mandatory where, when you are working as a physiotherapist so as soon as you enter into the hospital you get into the mask and the mask should be worn throughout the entire work without yeah. the mask you are not allowed to professor perumal what are the challenges that you are facing because we know that canada has no shortage of resources because they be going to contrast with other countries uh canada has no shortage of resources but what are in this pandemic the the the, the challenges like in the hospital settings we did not have any challenges like um, uh, very few challenges but in the private sectors we do have lots of challenges um uh, for example um, um i am initially the started for uh, staffs and shortage of uh, um, uh, supplies uh, um, uh, like uh, the sanitizers and mask and like we did not all the personal uh, then the public entire public got into fear and anxiety yes fear and anxiety go ahead sir so yes. we were and they start they started canceling their appointments um we uh, we 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 took all the efforts to to educate them like how safely we have been practicing in the private sectings um but still they were fear, having like lots of fear especially the elderly population um, um so like we, because we the clinics most likely about like small space about roughly are about uh, 2000 square feet so we need to maintain the physical distancing and uh, we used to book the patient for about like every 15 minutes but we couldn't do that because of physical had to use our uh, in order to make we have to reconfigure the clinical spaces of course um, in order to maintain the physical distancing we have to minimize the staffs as well Um, plus during the lockdown period uh, we, uh, we we are not supposed to work ex- except the hospital settings of course in the private clinics like completely closed so that time uh, um, we we were offering we still wanted to give the benefits of physiotherapy to the patients so we were offering tele rehabilitation of course so we we launched uh, 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 tele rehabilitation services we educated about that of course in canada privacy and confidentiality is very very important so when we use the uh, tele rehabilitation uh, services we need to maintain the privacy and confidentiality the platform providers are not supposed to be accessing the information shared between the physio and the patient so That, that that we implemented again we found, we 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 uh, faced lots of challenges not everyone uh, in with, with uh, are good with the technology of course yeah. so we had challenge we faced the challenges that one too and from the hospital of course we uh, being in acute care settings so the patient come there and we normally keep the patients moving to the other hospitals if needed either they will be discharged home or if they need more rehab they have to be uh, discharged to the other hospitals but because the, because of this pandemic situation for the patient transfer to the other hospital they have to mandatorily quarantine for about 14 days which created backlog so pretty much they stayed at the hospital and we have to keep working with those patient that limits our intake uh, from the emergency so those kind of challenges like all together we faced of course so the, uh, you had to show, shorten your duration of therapy also for your patients because the contact time was also reduced yes we reduced the contact time some in some uh, facilities um you know like uh, there are no as because we minimize the uh, number of people working in the clinic to maintain the physical distancing the physiotherapist responsibility is to keep uh, the environment as well as the you know the patient safe by cleaning everything so we worked without the assistant 
uh, plus uh, so our booking time is increased making sure we do have time to clean to this and environment of course um, yeah we need to go with the duration as well you need to because, in some facilities yes yeah in some facilities because, uh, there are the physical sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead sir in some facilities, the physiotherapists were asked to uh, uh, feed the patient, which is normally uh, not falling into the physiotherapy's roles and responsibilities because of the shortage of staff. So they have to feed in the morning as well as in the afternoon. That takes about one, uh, one and a half hours to two hours. So if they spend two hours over there, then remaining time, they had only about five plus hours to spend time with the clients. So, so that kind of challenges we face too. Yeah, uh, Professor Perumal, uh, I will come back to you because I need to get a perspective from everyone and from every country. So I'll come back to you. Um, I, I want to go to uh, Professor, uh, Professor John from UK. I want to know what's happening in the uh, UK. Thank you very much, Professor Perumal. I'll come back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is that me unmuted now? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Um, once again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to join the panel. It really is great to see such a broad range of people on, on the panel and so many people joining us. Um, uh, as you introduced me, my name is John Stevens, and I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Sunderland and programme leader for the physiotherapy programme there. Um, Prior to that, earlier in my career, I worked clinically within the military as a physiotherapist. Um, I also worked in the National Health Service in the UK, um, primarily within cardiorespiratory care and working with older people older, uh, in terms of rehabilitation, um, but also did some part-time work with uh, sports teams as well. I think what I'd like to do to start off in terms of the ethical challenges, I think the whole of the pandemic has raised for me two broad themes across the globe and one is about interconnectedness of people um, you know in terms of people working together not just within local organizations um, that Mr. Puramal has kind of highlighted within his organizations um, but also um, outside of that um, and also the interdependence between individuals so Although we're focusing on physiotherapy today, um, we can't really do that without acknowledging other professional colleagues and obviously more importantly, and most importantly, the people that we work with in terms of patients, service users, whatever is the preferred <laughs> terminology in your country. And because, I think, because we are, a, we are a team. We are a team, yes. Yes, and I think Probably it's helpful just to give a very brief timeline of COVID in the UK um, yeah. before I kind of go into um, a little bit more detail about the ethical challenges. The first case in the UK was identified at the end of January 2020 um, that as a country went into lockdown in the third week of March. The cases hit a peak around about April, March, April time. Um, so they went into lockdown the third week of March, started to ease out of lockdown um, towards the end of May and sort of into June. Um, we're at a point now where schools are opening, um, we're looking at universities opening, and so there's a, a you know, much more um, sort of getting back to a new normal, I think is the, is the term, terminology with that. In the UK, and I think it's well published, um, COVID has had quite a, a very high uh, impact in terms of, as of the 4th of September, so just on Friday, um, just over 342,000 cases in the UK, and tragically, just over 41, uh, 41 and a half thousand deaths. Although, um, again, the peak period around um, those instances were in the in the springtime. Um, there has been a slight rise in terms of cases again um, over the past couple of weeks as things have opened up again. But interestingly, 
not a, a great increase in terms of deaths. Uh, and, and this is mainly attributable to, I think, the cases are, are mainly about the younger, younger age groups as people have started to move around. If I move on then to, to physiotherapy, and in my own view, I think physiotherapy, we, we are about movement. We assess and facilitate movement. That's our, our job. And I think the ethical challenges have come within the context of that, both not just in the physical sense um, and the ethics around promotion of movement, but also in terms of um, mental health, societal health, economic health um, for the public, for physiotherapists and for physiotherapy. So that um, I think, again, Mr. Paramal had, had indicated in Canada that private practices had, uh, had had to close over the duration um, when they had their peak over there. Similar uh, situation within the UK, um, so in terms of the ethics surrounding job security for people, um, whether, you know, particularly for private practitioners um, and also people working with professional sports teams as professional sports shut down um, or all sports shut down in the UK. And again, has just started to sort of you know, take place again now. Um, I think in terms of mental health impact, um, some close connections I have with a local healthcare trust and NHS organization. Um, so far, people seem to be, and the physiotherapists seem to be coping extremely well. Um, they've done a fantastic job. Within the UK, there's been a lot of um, continuing professional development. So people have sort of rechained and upskilled, for example, MSK physiotherapists at the height of the pandemic um, were involved in. Um, delivering respiratory care. So they had training and, and kind of worked in critical care and acute respiratory care. Um, again, likewise, a big challenge for all those people has been the provision of adequate and appropriate personal protection equipment. Um, because I think everywhere in the world, a um, little bit slow to react really in terms of the pandemic. And so, you know, getting PPE supplies in um, has been a challenge and again um, in terms of education around its use and I think PPE is an interesting one because again the wearing of a mask and visors and so on um, this actually does cut down in terms of patient contact um, has a lot of ethical implications for things like consent um, informed consent how you, you know and again particularly people in acute care and critical care um, they're very stressful situations for patients to be in um, when they're surrounded by people, you know, that are kind of um, togged up in PPE. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it actually it takes out the personal uh, relationship between a physiotherapist and the patient, because now absolutely. you have a barrier when you're uh, dealing with the patient. Yes, absolutely. And this goes back not just with the patient, but between team members as well. Um, and there's the actual physicality of actually being dressed in PPE for extended periods of time. It's, it's you know, for those that have been in that situation, um, it's extremely hot and uncomfortable after a while. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of issues um, around that. Um, as I mentioned, the sort of retraining and redeployment of physiotherapy service so services has meant that some areas and again, highlighted in the UK, and there's some ongoing research around this, has been around the access of people with long-term conditions um, to services. So particularly thinking about people with um, cardiovascular conditions, um, long-term lung disorders, cancer as well. Um, and some recent work that was carried out by a group of people called the Health Foundation, um, looked at sort of reduction of access to services by people which had dropped and I thought this was quite a low um, figure to be honest a drop by 20 percent um, in terms of people accessing being able to access services um, during the COVID peak period okay. and the largest falls came in the use of health services by 25 <clears> percent <throat> excuse me for people with mental health problems and 22% um, for, for cancer. Some of the reasons around this were 
that people couldn't get an appointment again okay. because of COVID. Some people were actually concerned about COVID and didn't want to attend, you know, for their own safety. And you can appreciate that people with long-term lung conditions with cancer who are immunosuppressed, um, you know, they may not see that as a, a good risk to actually go. But obviously you do wonder what, what's happened here um, with those individuals. Um, although there were uh, a number of people who didn't attend because they felt that they no longer needed to attend and they were feeling a bit better and probably didn't need to take up, up the appointment. So um, again, there's an interesting sort of mix there and a lot of work I think that will be need to, done, to be done in the UK in terms of looking at what's happening with people with long-term conditions, their access to things like pulmonary rehab and cardiac rehab Although having said that, alongside MSK services, there has been a massive acceleration in the use of technology and okay. remote consultations. So the and, same and thing, that. The same thing what per, uh, uh, Professor Perumal was talking about, telehealth, because I need to come to, uh, to uh, the other countries where they're not using uh, telehealth and it poses a lot of challenges. But before I do that, uh, Professor uh, John, I just want to know, well, did you have a group of physiotherapists refusing to work for any reason? Um, not to my knowledge. I mean, there were, I know that there are individuals who are, may well have been shielding, um, that may have been at risk themselves. Um, I, and. You know, again, the I say the response generally, from what I gather, it, it has been really impressive, and there's a, been a lot of valuable work um, in terms of bringing together a lot of guidance materials by our governing body, the Chartered Society yes. of Physiotherapy. Yes, um, I, and also, what we will do, uh, Professor, next 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 week, we will do, uh, discuss about the policies, which is very important for guidelines and policies to take place. Yeah. So. I will have to stop you here because I need to address. I'm sorry, I have to stop a lot of all of you because I, for the you know because I need to give everyone a chance to speak. So I will come back to you. No problem. I mean, I think the whole issue. There's so many wide ranging issues yeah. through to you know yeah. the kind of but, uh, let, let, quality let, and so let's on. Get, let's get the views from all the countries. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Saud. Are you there from Saudi Arabia? <laughs> Professor Saud, are you there? You can Mr. unmute your, yeah. Yes. Please go ahead. Yes. yes. Professor Saud, can you come a little closer to the, um, to the camera? We cannot see you well. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, okay. Professor Saud, you're talking from uh, Saudi Arabia. What are the problems there in Saudi Arabia for physiotherapy and the profession as a whole? And uh, if you could just address a few issues and then we can, you know, take it forward. So I uh, thank you for uh, having me, first of all, and I'm glad to be a part of this uh, panel. Um, I actually uh, work more in the educational uh, sector. Yes. Um, however, I work closely um, in the supervision of our uh, internship uh, students. And um, yes. we all know the importance, uh, important role of uh, physiotherapist in this uh, pandemic. So yes. in our school, we believe that uh, in uh, giving our students the chance to uh, continue their training in uh, hospitals, uh, during this uh, crisis, as we believe it's a great opportunity for them to learn how to deal with the crisis, uh, this crisis, and in the future crises as well. So, uh, so may, may, I ask you, may I ask you, Professor, did, did, were your students, uh, all of them had to go for, uh, for uh, clinical care, or they, did you have instances where students protested and didn't want to go and uh, did you have cases like that or were they forced to go for care uh, and which uh, year students are you talking about is it interns or is it final years or so they um to my knowledge uh, they didn't refuse to continue their uh, training but they were giving the chance if they want to postpone their uh, training um uh, until this after this crisis or after the numbers get uh, down however 
uh, students who are uh, vulnerable to uh, infection, those who have uh, chronic diseases, uh, they were uh, advised to postpone their uh, training. Um, however, um, such as the other colleagues said, um, in, in the governmental hospitals where our students work mostly, uh, um, the PT clinics have minimized their contact uh, or working hours and also shortened the contact time with the patients and um, especially in inpatient uh, clinics. So the students had to prepare like a brochure and flyers with the clear instructions for patients to take home and uh, practice the exercises or the maneuvers um, at home. And uh, in some hospitals, not all of them, they were um, occupied with um, a good technology to uh, um, do the tele uh, rehabilitation. Um, so the student has to learn or take courses on how to um, deal with uh, this kind of uh, uh, technology. Uh, some of our uh, students have been asked to move from the PT clinic to uh, yes, help with our other uh, supportive units like um, data collection units or um, patient education uh, units. So uh, they got to learn uh, <clears throat> more than uh, uh, what they uh, expected to. They got to learn uh, new things and help in uh, uh, different uh, units and departments. Okay, do, uh, do you have in Saudi Arabia a, a community practice for physiotherapists that students or physiotherapists go into the community and provide care? Is there, a, is there something like that? Uh, during their internship year, uh, they are asked to uh, go to um, governmental hospitals. Okay, all right. But uh, after they graduate, they, um, we have a community um, uh, rehabilitation units, yes, or centers. Centers you have. All right. Thank you very much. I'll come back, uh, Professor. May I go to uh, uh, Professor Maria? Uh, Dr. Mary, uh, Dr. Mary, can you hear me? Uh, I can I just? Yes, Professor. Can, yes. Can, can we just? Uh, I think Dr. Naomi has come. I might introduce Dr. Naomi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Dr. Dr. Naomi. Uh, is the head of please physical unmute therapy. yourself, Dr. Naomi. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and and you can wave your hand so that all can recognize you. Dr. Naomi is the head of physical therapy department of orthopedics and rehabilitation at the Moy University. Is that in Kenya, Dr. Naomi? Yes, it's in Kenya. Right. So uh, we have. Um, our panelists from Africa, uh, from Kenya, also joining us. Welcome, and thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, back to Dr. Mary. I was. Uh, uh, I wanted uh, Professor Maria to come in now. Professor, you are from the KM Hospital, the famous KM Hospital in Mumbai, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you've heard uh, the problems in, I mean, the, uh, the challenges in uh, Canada. You've heard in UK and Saudi Arabia. Is, uh, can you give us a perspective of what is happening in Mumbai? Because Mumbai is one of the centers, uh, places where it has the highest number of COVID patients. And how has uh, it affected the profession? Can, can I, sorry, can I ask you, Dr. Uh, Maria, you're, you have a COVID ward there, is that right, in, in, in KEM? Yeah. Yes, and sir. are you, are you um, uh, we have a unit and Dr. Santosh yes. Salagri is there. Are you working on the COVID ward? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, I'm working good. with the COVID. Okay. All right. And that's you. brilliant because you can tell us. So, uh, big, uh, I would like to first thank all of y'all dignitaries for giving me this opportunity to be here. And I echo a lot of sentiments of uh, Dr. John. I am a cardiorespiratory therapist by speciality. And I also had the UNESCO chair of bioethics at KM. Subsequently, as the thing was passed on to me from this year onwards. And looking at everything into the complete picture that we saw at KM, basically the whole lockdown scenario, which started from March 11th when the lockdown was announced and there was a rapid increase in cases thereon. And now what we are seeing is a reduction in number. There were a lot of dedicated units 
that had come up. TM is a tertiary care center which caters to the socio-economically backward status to the majority. And uh, as Mumbai was trapped into it along with Maharashtra, Pune, and the other zones, we had open grounds, we had you know, the sports complexes, all that were formed into the units or dome centers, which were dedicated COVID care center. KM catered to both COVID as well as non-COVID. We being into the physical therapy of a primary aim is to promote health, promote rehabilitation of the patients. And the first major setback that we felt was when the lockdown was announced with traveling issues that came into place, no modes of transport, no modes of travel, even for the therapist to travel and reach KM was, was a great difficulty. And so was it to, in many of the other parts of the country. Yeah, yeah. The second major problem that we came across was, you know, telling patients not to come because we did not know at that point of time how far this is going to go and taking care of infections and it being an infectious disease, we thought it is better we don't tell our regular patients, that is those of cardiopulmonary rehab, whom we used to do more of face-to-face -face rehab, we told them, wait for a while and then you can join. And then with the whole lockdown, the whole non-COVID rehabilitation, you call it stroke, we call it cardiopulmonary rehab and the other chronic disorders as sir mentioned it all went behind so the basic services to these patients was a major setback safety main issue where we are performing physiotherapy now when i go into the icu or when i'm treating patients all the maneuvers that we are doing are aerosol generating procedures and if you look at the guidelines it says okay. aerosol generating procedures are not to be done the basic resource that is a protective resource is the PPE. And we had to use the PPE very judiciously. So we had non-COVID going, we had COVID going, and whether the PPE is to be allocated to the COVID or the non-COVID became an issue. Now, when I'm looking back, and when we ask people that who got infected when they were in, it is basically people who are in the non-COVID area because they did not probably wear a proper PPE or did not get an N95 mask. And the suspected individuals that the suspected COVID patients that they treated was with proper requirements. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of anxiety that was generated at this point of time, basically of going inside and treating patients. And here there was a question that came in that was a lot of mental stress that was associated. You see, most of the physiotherapists are females. A woman with you know young generation children, they have elderly parents to cater to, so they had that fear, you know, from duty to care when go inside to the towards a family bound, looking whether you know they'll be able to uh, contract the illness, take it home to the family members, and a lot of issues arising over there. And as you have been ask, asking, ma'am, whether it is justifiable for somebody to refuse and say that I will not go in. And there have been instances where people were a little reluctant to go in. And that was from the anxiety and care for the elderly. And in such a case as whether uh, action should be taken or things should be done, how justifiable it is, I, I really don't know. I mean, that was a major concern. And everybody was put into rotations and everybody did cater to and went in only people who did not come in were those as we had set in the guidelines that they should not be you know, above a certain age and comorbidities and things like that. So they did not come inside. Otherwise, everybody went into a proper rotation that was set in. And that was a pattern that was followed in all over Maharashtra. They did that. And that's how we went ahead with it. The other problem that I feel inside the ICU was what ought to be done and what we actually did. We are not the ones you know, who go into triage and things like that. We are not trained for it. But we had to make certain decisions, like patients who are intubated, predicted mortality very high. We wanted to reduce the contact time of the patient, the therapist inside. There were every ICU, if I take one ICU, which has got 40 beds, my therapist ratio is three to the 40 beds. I needed to consider everything over there. And at that point of time, we had to do bare minimum to give the most benefit and minimize the harm over there. So at yeah. times we felt that at a point of time where we are looking at predictive mortality was high, we restricted ourselves to certain very minimal procedures. 
Well, okay. otherwise in a normal ICU, I would have gone and done a good of chest physiotherapy and all. We did not, we did not go ahead and do those things over there. So that's one more area where we uh, restricted ourselves. And as Sir said, we are movement therapists. Assessment, treatment, everything requires contact. You know, we were, you know, talking about contactless therapy, which was absolutely not possible. When I want to make a patient with COVID who's got affected with stroke to stand up, I cannot say I'm doing contactless. I'm wearing a PPE shield where he can barely see me, can barely see my facial expressions, the, cannot the, hear me out. The same thing what uh, Professor John was saying, yes. Yeah. So it was very difficult for us. So we made huge posters. We tried to communicate with them in whatever manners that we could, especially we come from a resource where, you know, we have limited resource settings. So we did all those kinds of things, you know, to get through and get across and touch the human touch. That is the most important thing within the gloves, you know, two pairs of gloves we are wearing and we are trying to do things and we are trying to do it at a distance. So that's somewhere I felt that there was a hitch over there. But okay. to our maximum, we, we did all safety precautions and to date, not a single physiotherapist during the COVID duty has got infected treating the COVID patients. And that I felt, you know, taking all the safeguards with the resources and a lot of medical support, the support from Dr. Salagre, every other institute had a lot of medical support, the whole team coming forward, whole team collaborating. The whole group's WhatsApp group came into my, and all communications on the WhatsApp group that helped, you know, to go ahead. And the private practitioners face the major setback from yes, because, because economically, financially, people have taken loans, clinics. They have to give, they have to treat patients, and everything had come down to a standstill there because sanitizing, they have to manage their own PPEs if they have to start, you know. What if infection occurs? But we had a few government policies for people who are working in BMC, for people you know, who are working during COVID duty to be compensated. But where private is concerned, there was, there was no compensation that was you know, uh, given over there. So there were these you know, few challenges which were constantly ongoing beside the student education and exam systems. Yeah, because yeah. we, yeah. in no, March is an exam I, time. I, I can see from the chat box itself, uh, Bill has written, I, fo I found more safer in COVID ICU while treating COVID patients yes. rather than yes. normal. He's uh, the same sentiments, what you're saying. Thank you, Maria. We'll come back to you. Um, I need to go to uh, uh, Professor Walid from uh, Egypt. Professor, are you there? Thank you very much. Professor Walid? Please unmute your uh, yes. uh, Can Thank you unmute? Can you unmute? Please go ahead. Please go ahead, Professor Walid from Egypt. Yes, I, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Can you tell us the situation in Egypt and uh, how? Uh, what were the challenges for the physiotherapists there? According to all way, uh, agencies worldwide recommended their population to stay home to prevent and determine their fatal infection and disease. During the exposure in Egypt to this pandemic infection disease over the, uh, we, we uh, uh, in Egypt, according to the guidelines of Ministry of Health, we can provide our service of uh, rehabilitation in, uh, as I told before, in uh, inpatient and outpatient physiotherapy clinic, in uh, Cairo University hospitals uh, uh, particularly, we cannot uh, regula uh, regulate the visit of physical uh, of patients need physical therapy for the clinic, but we uh, regulate uh, according to the instructions and the uh, isolation of uh, some COVID patients. We uh, prepared and planned to uh, provide our service for patients uh, whether COVID or not COVID patients in ICU uh, according to. Uh, the, uh, some investigations or manifestations. Uh, many COVID patients needed uh, uh, for uh, mechanical ventilations, mm -hmm. and also they suffered from uh, uh, respiratory acute respiratory distress syndrome. Okay. So pulmonary, pulmonary rehabilitation was very important uh, to uh, decrease the weaning uh, or reduce the duration uh, of the mechanical ventilation. 
Okay. According to also mechanical ventilation have uh, some complications. So we recommend all patients after mechanical ventilation to conduct an inspiratory muscle training or uh, physical exercise training to increase immunity and uh, decrease inflammatory markers. Uh, we provide our service according to the guidelines. Okay. Uh, but patient, but patient elderly, elderly, particularly elderly patients and children, uh, we, we uh, send some instructions uh, 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 through telephone or uh, sending videos uh, to um, how uh, conduct a physical therapy program or exercise training program. Uh, uh, this uh, from uh, instructions and guidelines of telehealth or telerehabilitation. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, Professor Bal, what were the challenges? Was there any problems that the physiotherapists face in, um, in uh, what is it, in Egypt? Did you have no, any problem no in terms of, uh, uh, did you have all the personal protective uh, equipment like resources like mask yes, and, no, no, no. you know, no, the no. gowns? All, all of us, uh, challenges, sure, sure, uh, for physiotherapists, we have to uh, uh, prevent uh, physiotherapists and our patients from uh, outbreak of this infection. So we, uh, uh, in Egypt, uh, submit some guidelines uh, for conduct this physical therapy program. Uh, number one, uh, 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 what resources like... Uh, masks and the gloves and the gowns and the overshoes and the goggles to uh, prevent uh, this infection. But no challenges. Okay. So, um... we, 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 uh, we, we have uh, more facilities from uh, the Ministry of Health to support oh. uh, our, our uh, service to patients, to our patients. Okay, but... Uh... Okay, but uh, uh, were, were there a group of physiotherapists who were very scared to come in and work? In, in work, uh, we, we make regulation between some physiotherapists uh, uh, three days by three days. Not all uh, physiotherapists come to, uh, daily to the clinic. Also, number of patients decrease. No, if any patients come uh, in, uh, also during this period, any patient uh, come, we uh, make like uh, in one hour for one partition, only one patient. So, uh, so we decrease the number of uh, patients come and also uh, decrease number of physiotherapist presence or attendance in uh, the clinic. Yeah, but did you, didn't you have a backlog of patients because you were taking less number of patients and... Uh... Yes, yes, uh, who, who need, he, who, uh, you know, uh, reduced number, number reduced per, uh, 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 already now uh, reduced. Many patients cannot come, but uh, some patients who come, we cannot receive all patients in one time. So we regulate the time uh, of visit. Uh, a number of uh, who, who patients uh, decreased from three sessions per week to two sessions per week. Now patients need uh, five sessions, we decrease the eight to three sessions. We uh, asked them to uh, conduct some instructions and some videos uh, to complete the program of physical therapy in home. Okay, right, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Balit. Okay. I'll go to Dr. Uh, Surangika from uh, Sri Lanka. Dr. Surangika. Can you hear me? I'm just, yes, uh, yes. please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this program. Uh, I work as a senior lecturer in a uh, university in Sri Lanka called the University of Peradeniya. So I involve more of um, academic activities. Uh, so um, before uh, I move on to the question, like I would just like to mention about the scenario of COVID-19 in our country. Okay. So. Uh, our country is an island country in the Indian Ocean and not much population. It's about 21.5 million people. So as for today, like we have uh, 3,121 COVID-19 patients from 10th March, 2020 okay. and uh, 191 active cases in the hospitals uh, and uh, no new cases reported today, luckily. Uh, 209, uh, 2,918 recoveries 
and discharged okay. from the hospitals uh, and uh, recorded 12 deaths so far. So, uh, like I want to mention that more than six months into this pandemic, uh, Sri Lanka has made a great progress in controlling the community spread of the virus. Uh, the healthcare professionals and general public are happy with the way of our government curtailed this pandemic situation. Uh, so, like uh, being a developing country, like we have very minimal tertiary care health facilities uh, to cater our population. You'll be surprised, like uh, about 550 ICU beds we had for the whole population that time. So, therefore, higher healthcare authorities. Uh, have identified that we should uh, more focus on preventive medicine. Once it comes to the stage of treatment, we will lose our control uh, by not able to provide adequate ventilatory facilities, ICU care to the patients. So uh, started acting uh, from the beginning to prevent community spread. Um, so uh, we had a certain uh, team, uh, teams, uh, uh, established by the president, uh, like uh, uh, I would uh, tell their names, like Presidential Task Force to control the pandemic and restore the normal lives of people in Sri Lanka. And they have uh, monitored about the food distribution to restrict people's movements, security, and arranging healthcare facilities to doorsteps. Uh, and also established a national operation center for prevention of COVID 19 outbreak under the control of army commander. So okay. uh, so they have done uh, mostly the preventive side, like to avoid the community spread. So uh, like whoever confirmed with the case, what they have done was uh, they have uh, traced their contacts, even up to the third contact. And they were, I mean, they are okay. taken to the like um, quarantine centers uh, because by end of March, we have, uh, we had about uh, 45, quarantine centers and um, they made uh, like uh, free of charge so that people okay. won't be having issue to uh, get their self quarantine. So, How about this? sorry, I cannot hear you properly. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, yes. Okay, so, so when I come to the uh, physiotherapy practice uh, during the lockdown season, uh, the physiotherapy outpatient departments are closed uh, from early April to end of May, both in government and uh, private sector. So they have done only inward, inward management. Um, and uh, due to the less number of patients, uh, because, uh, because of these uh, uh, many preventive measures at the beginning of the condition, the, there was less burden to the hospitals. So. COVID-19 patients are treated in a few centers, like about four centers in our country. So um, apart from the physiotherapists working already in these uh, specialized centers, volunteers from close by hospitals uh, are posted into these uh, specialized units. Like uh, earlier, um, they have made rosters for everyone to go and work there, but um, many physiotherapists uh, mainly the lady physiotherapist had concerns in uh, working uh, in this hospital. So what they have done was they made a, a, I mean, they asked whoever is volunteered can go and practice because a few number of therapists were needed in that time. So, um, so the, like the, they have posted in for two months at a stretch, but once in three days, uh, and they were allowed to treat only the COVID-19 patients. Uh, so uh, as uh, Prof. Dr. Maria said, like uh, uh, we, there was like regular, I mean, um, circulars given by the government, like to minimize the patient contact as much as possible. But the, like I had talked to some uh, physiotherapists worked in the, uh, these specialized centers in that uh, peak time. So they have told like it is, like it was not possible for them to do like, of course they have done closed suctioning, but of course uh, for ICU patients, um, they have done limb physiotherapy. And, uh, but of course for inward patients, uh, uh, the stable patients are kept in isolated chambers. So 
they have taught uh, physiotherapy um, treatments like breathing exercises, chest mobility exercises, positioning and all like being outside uh, of their chambers. Uh, and uh, when I asked the views of the physiotherapists, uh, so they said like they are very satisfied with the safety measures provided in the okay. hospital uh, because all, okay. all of these uh, specialized uh, hospitals are government hospitals. So the yes. government is uh, providing like, Probably. yes, uh, the, like whatever the, I mean, all the possible safety measures. So uh, they have told like they've got Ebola kits, uh, like good quality and 95 masking 3M brand, head covers, shoe covers, goggles, like they are very satisfied with the safety measures. Okay. And um, so far, not a single physiotherapist infected okay. uh, who worked in these hospitals. So, and also, like uh, I mentioned earlier, like they had two weeks of, uh, sorry, two months of posting at a stretch. But after the posting, they have to undergo 21 days of uh, period okay. of quarantine okay. uh, before they go to their usual workplaces because they are coming from the other hospitals. So, and um, of course, they got increased uh, salary increments, like okay. increased All right. that, time. That, that's really nice to hear because we asked the nurses also the same question whether they received increased uh, salary for working for COVID, and here in India, they didn't. So, it's really, it looks like Sri Lanka seems to be in control of the situation, and uh, uh, physiotherapists are not really having much of a problem there. Yes, and uh, like I want to mention you this also, like they have told, uh, I mean, during the lockdown period, whoever volunteered to work in this hospital, as appreciation, they got um, hotel stay packages even, okay. like <laughs> okay. so, All right. to mo okay. maybe motivate or like um, yeah. token of appreciation. So they're quite happy with happy the thing. With yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Is there anything else you'd like to say? And as concerns, like they have mentioned, um, the physiotherapist as well as other healthcare workers uh, are not provided with separate accommodation facility. So they are very much concerned about the people at their homes. So, and uh, also another uh, thing they have mentioned was like regu regular outpatient departments for other patients uh, we have started from June. After okay. the lockdown period, but the physiotherapists are unhappy for not having proper safety attire in the, I mean, uh, hospitals to see the normal patients. Like okay. they have uh, scrubs and uh, surgical masks, gloves only. So, but they are telling um, there may be like suspects or some close contacts of the COVID patients can come like unnoticedly. So they are worried okay. about that. Yeah. Okay, so what I what we we'll, what I'll do is I uh, we'll come back to you, uh, uh, Professor. I just want to go to uh, Professor Na Naomi from uh, Kenya. Professor, can you unmute yourself, please? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I I have Professor Mahmud. I have not forgotten you, Professor Mahmud from Malaysia. I have not forgotten you. So please uh, <laughs> be there. Uh, Professor, uh, now you may. How is the situation there? You're in Kenya. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Please tell us uh, how, what is the situation in Kenya and how physiotherapists have been handling the situation. Are there any particular challenges? Okay. Thank you so much for having me uh, in this panel. I'm really grateful to represent East Africa and probably Africa. Uh, I want to give a background uh, history of how COVID started. It started in Kenya. The first case was reported in March uh, 2020. Uh, okay. It slowly, yeah, it was going up slowly, but the peak came in um, uh, mid June and getting to early August, the peak was very high, but at the moment uh, the cases are slowing down. So we are happy that uh, the curve is uh, slowly flattening. Okay. Now at the moment in Kenya, we, we had 34,000 cases uh, and, and uh, the mortality was uh, roughly 600 with 21,000 recoveries. I may attribute the, the, the low numbers in as much as uh, 34,000 is not a low number, 
to a young generation. Uh, we have a population of a very young generation eh, and uh, a very low percentage of old generation. So most probably that is why we uh, our cases never went up. Yeah. Uh, now, looking at physiotherapy in, in Kenya uh, in relation to COVID, now we had uh, a, a great uh, challenge when it came to PPEs because uh, <clears throat> Kenya is a facility where uh, a lot of patients go to government hospitals. And in government hospitals, we have uh, the national hospitals and the referral hospitals. Okay. Now, initially, the only referral hospital that were getting PPEs were the national hospitals. And we apparently have two national hospitals, which I happen to work in one of them, which is a university hospital. So other referral hospital took a long time before they got the PPEs. So that was a bit of a challenge because not anyone would work to, want to go and see a patient, uh, a COVID patient without PPEs. So that was a bit of a challenge. But uh, as time went by, the government was able to up its game. And uh, we had uh, a situation where all the referral hospitals had PPEs. But apparently within the community settings, we have the community facilities. Uh, the community facilities, not all got the PPEs. Even as we stand today, not all the facilities have uh, the ICUs, the HDUs and all that. So, so they, they are likely not to be in a position to handle uh, COVID cases, but uh, within the higher levels of facilities, the physios were able to get uh, PPEs and, and therefore they were able to see the COVID cases. Now, the beauty about it is that we did not have a huge number of patients going to ICUs and HDUs, and therefore the numbers were okay as far as the staff uh, establishment was concerned. So we had very low cases of uh, critically ill patients, but the number of physiotherapists were able to take care of them. Okay. Now, another challenge was uh, the private fa facilities where most of the patients uh, go as outpatients. And uh, this is where almost all the private facilities uh, closed. And uh, at that point, we are looking at uh, income generating uh, sources for our physios. So a good number of physios uh, suffered economically. Uh, but by and large, uh, the, the government was able to chip in a little bit and uh, help in, in terms of finances. Now coming to the public facilities, outpatient rehabilitation, uh, our numbers reduced tremendously because most of our cases are uh, patients who have comorbidities. Uh, hypertensive cases, diabetic cases, and, and uh, without even anyone telling them not to come to the facility, they were scared. So we recorded, uh, yes, we recorded a reduced number of uh, outpatient uh, clients. Uh, and, and therefore that was a bit of a challenge because uh, when it comes to telemedicine, it's not quite advanced in Africa or in East Africa. A lot of our patients come from remote settings they do not have computers, they do not have smartphones. So therefore they just stuck without physiotherapy. That was a bit of a concern to us. Uh, our other challenge was uh, when it came to schools, physiotherapy schools were closed. And, and this came early in uh, March when all the training institutions, that is uh, both at the lower level and the, the higher level. Uh, apparently I work in uh, one of the university, I'm a lecturer. So our institutions were closed. We never anticipated uh, a long stay at home. Up until uh, uh, like two weeks ago when uh, the government uh, instructed that uh, most of the medical student physiotherapy inclusive, uh, the final students should go back to school so that they can be able to continue with education. Otherwise it has been a tough time for students uh, and a tough time for physiotherapy as well. A tough time for patients as well, because uh, we realized along the way, even the COVID patients uh, went through a lot of stigma. We had a huge number of patients who were asymptomatic and, and therefore they could be tested, they are positive, but they do not have any symptoms. And they were taken to quarantine center for 14 days. After the 14 days and they were tested severally and confirmed not to be positive, 
uh, integration back to the community was a bit of a challenge. They were uh, completely stigmatized and ostracized in such a manner that the community could not take them back. So that was a bit of a challenge and it in a way uh, demoralized patients to go for testing. So, so that in itself facilitated community transmission because many patients would be in the community, they have the symptoms, but because of the fact that they go for testing, they are taken to quarantine center and they cannot easily integrate back in the community, they stuck with their conditions. Some of these patients even died at home only to be tested afterwards and, and uh, seem to be having COVID. So, so those are some of the challenges that we faced and uh, uh, the government has been very instrumental in terms of uh, getting PPEs, uh, looking into ways how the students can go back to school, but uh, all in all, it was unprecedented tough time for Africans. What about, uh, Professor, what about uh, physiotherapists who were treating patients uh, with COVID-19? Were they stigmatized? Uh, not really, but uh, they, they were not stigmatized. They, they did not even uh, uh, refuse to go to work, but uh, they themselves were scared of COVID cases because we had incidences of poor quality PPEs. Okay. where you're, you're a huge person, you're given a small PPEs and uh, as you put it on, it ruptures and that predisposes you to COVID. So, so the problem was not with the community as far as physios are concerned, but within the structures of the facilities where the PPEs were not sufficient and they were, some of them were not quality. Okay, right. Thank you very much because you brought it a very important point of stigma, which uh, I will ask Dr. Maria also to address it. So uh, before that, let me just, uh, uh, I haven't given Professor um, uh, Mahmoud a chance from Malaysia. So we'll go to Professor Mahmoud. Professor, are you there? Yeah, yes? please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me as a panel. Uh, all right, um, my name is uh, Muhammad Noor. All right, I'm from University Tunku Abdul Rahman, um, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. All right, um, I will just brief you, brief you um, about this current situation in Malaysia. All right, currently we, we uh, in Malaysia, we have a th over th 30 million population. All right, and, and then we have uh, over 9,000 cases of uh, COVID-19. And the recovery rate is over ninety five percent. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, I would say that Malaysian government has uh, uh, done a pretty good job in uh, preventing and um, uh, curbing these issues. Okay. All right. The reason why I think we are uh, 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 are good in these uh, uh, issues is because uh, the uh, the lockdown is uh, introduced very early. All right. It is introduced in. Um, Third week of March, all right, and then all industries are closed, all right, including the uh, higher education. I'm from the uh, uh, university. I'm I work in academic, all right. So, um, all right, this is one of the reason that uh, why the number of uh, the infected cases, active uh, cases in Malaysia, is very low, all right, and then. Um, Although high, the higher education industries were closed, all right, uh, teaching and learning uh, still continue. All right. uh, that alone poses a lot of issues to the uh, universities, all right, to the staff, as well as to the students. All right. So I will highlight a, a few issues, uh, mainly from the uh, uh, academic side, as well as a little bit from the uh, clinical side. I will start with the clinical side first. All right. Um, the I think the most uh, affected uh, physiotherapists uh, are uh, from the uh, private centers, right? uh, because of this uh, lockdown, uh, they have to close down their um, uh, uh, private, private centers, their centers, physiotherapy centers. So they are not allowed to uh, treat patient during that period, outpatient uh, especially. Uh, at least for uh, for two to three months, right, they don't have. Uh, uh, income okay through the uh, outpatient it's different from the government government um, physiotherapists they have no problem from uh, the uh, economic uh, health side 
However, they have uh, uh, longer working hours, right? They they are they are uh, leave have been frozen for the for uh, the early three months, right? They they are not allowed to take leave, annual leave, right? During the uh, three month, first three month, right? And then for uh, the issues uh, from the uh, uh, academic side, right? as I mentioned previously, uh, university is facing issues. Uh, the students are also facing issues, and the uh, lecturers is also facing issues. Right? Okay, the the first issues uh, that I would like to highlight here is the issues of equality. Right, since the um, uh, learning and uh, uh, teaching activities is converted online, right? all of the staff and the students need at least uh, uh, one device, uh, either a phone or a computer or a laptop, and uh, uh, they need a, a fast and stable internet. Unfortunately, right, uh, most of the students, I, uh, I, I replace all of the staff and students have at least a, a phone or a, a, a laptop. However, not everyone have the access to fast and stable internet. Okay, so there's uh, there's uh, issues of equality. Not everyone will have the same opportunity to uh, attend the online classes. Right? Some may attend, but they will drop out uh, along the way. Okay, so that is the I think the biggest issues are faced by the uh, students and the staff. Right? Okay, and then the next one. Uh, I think this is um, also uh, the main issue is the um, issues of mental health of the mental health of the staff and the student. Right? Yeah. So this uh, the staff, right? Within overnight, they have to uh, they 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 change their uh, job from tutor to designer and tutor. So they have to design, we have to design a new uh, materials to for online teaching, right, to make our online teaching more worthwhile and more uh, 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 interesting. Right? So uh, within overnight, we have to change and then it, we, we uh, uh, some some lecturers are, are not uh, uh, equipped with, with that uh, uh, skills. Right? Yeah, okay, so technology challenges. Yes, yes. So that poses a, a, a challenges to the um, uh, the uh, uh, staffs, like basically. All right. So uh, there's a uh, one more um, uh, term that we call as uh, information overload, which is uh, all the staff and the student have uh, uh, this case, like information overload. They receive a lot of uh, um, a big amount of information, right? And, and the information is uh, quite complex, right? And we have a redundancy of the information. Uh, the university, uh, certain department, different dif department will uh, give a different information about this online uh, teaching and learning activities. So it confuses the uh, lecturers, it confuses the uh, 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 students, right? And uh, the information is also not consist consistent. Mm. So that are, I think, the, the three main uh, issues faced by the uh, uh, staff, uh, physiotherapy, physiotherapy teachers, uh, physiotherapy students, and also the physiotherapists uh, practicing in clinical setting. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor Mahmoud. I just, I'm going to ask this to all our uh, panelists, the issue of stigma. Were the physiotherapists stigmatized in the community? Were they able uh, to? I think that is not the issue in, in, uh, in, in my country. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Professor Saud, Professor Saud. Uh, the issue of stigma in uh, please and yeah thank you. Yeah, it was not a problem in Saudi Arabia. No. It wasn't a problem, so they're able to go back home without a problem. Yes. Those who are working. All right. Thank you very much, Professor John. Issue of stigma. As far as I'm aware, this, this hasn't been a problem. In fact, there's been a little bit of a reverse <clears throat> in terms of positive. Um, stigma if that's the correct thing to call it in the there was an issue around for example food stores supermarkets and so on they had periods during the early part of the lockdown um where they gained preference for healthcare workers to gain access you know because of the hours that people were working and they weren't available just to kind of go and 
stock up on food and um, you know kind of resources that they required at home. So um, quite in that way, it was a, a sort of positive stigma, if you like. Although I would imagine a few members of the public probably didn't take too kindly to that. Maybe I don't know. You know, that's just. But on the whole, the, on the whole, positive, the yeah. workers were treated very well. There was no uh, problem. Yes, I mean, again, it, it was kind of well publicised um, sort of on UK news and beyond um, for a period until the end of May, the Thursday evening, clap for carers. Um, you know, everybody went outside mm -hmm. and, well, um, the majority of people went outside and applauded um, yeah. all the frontline workers, basically. So there was appreciation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Surangika? Professor? Hello, yes. Uh, I, yeah, I do agree with uh, uh, Professor John uh, because, uh, like, in our country also, like, the healthcare pro uh, workers have um, got um, priorities in supermarkets and uh, even the uh, pro public transport okay. systems. So, and also, like, in our case, right. uh, our physiotherapists are posted for two months only. So after that, they had uh, 21 days of quarantine period before they go to their usual practice. So as such, they did not... It was positive. Yes. It was positive. Right. Thank you very much. Professor Wali, Egypt, how was the situation for healthcare workers there? Was it positive or for physiotherapists? Was there any question of stigma? No, no, no problem uh, presented in Egypt. Okay, well, were they appreciated? No, 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 no problem, no problem. We go home, no problem. Everything is yeah. okay. No, did you get to see, because uh, uh, Professor John said there was priority given to healthcare workers. Was that there in Egypt? Was it any, you know, uh, did the government or the public, did they give priority for healthcare workers? Any concessions, any... No, no, no problem, but so also only guidelines for precautions. Precautions oh. in work with precautions to go home, everything. Oh. Yes, okay. precautions also in the street and uh, any any activity they're living, just precautions. We okay. have to, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Professor Maria, can you tell us, uh, can you unmute yourself? You just muted yourself. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So basically from stigma point of view, we did not have any stigma as faced as general. However, there were incidences in some of the societies where doctors were not given accommodation and all. But there was a general fear within that we had experienced that once we used to finish our rest period, and then go back because our rest period was very small for around five days and we added Sunday and six days. Then our own you know, peers and all had the fear that seven days, you know, your symptoms start coming out at seven days. So since seven days period is not over. So we used to get, you know, separated and we had a separate area where we used to sit so that, you know, the others don't get any. Just in case on the seventh day or eighth day or something, a positive case detected. You know, every building, okay, that this is quarantine, this is sealed. And that itself got a lot of stigma to the family members. Yes, the family yes. at times were very reluctant to even get tested. Can I bar ake board laga ke jayenge? They are going to put the board outside and the whole building will come to know that yes. we have got COVID positive. So COVID by itself gave a lot of stigma to the patient. And for that reason, also many people didn't want to go out though they were symptomatic they want to go out and uh, get tested for covid yeah all right okay because we had a lot of problems with doctors being stigmatized uh, over uh, covid so i was just wondering whether the other healthcare force also faced the same uh, issues the fear factor was there madam everybody had a fear when we came back from covid duty so there okay. was automatically you could sense that here in people and it was not wrong on their part also. Okay, right. Thank you, uh, Professor Maria. Uh, Professor Perumal, Canada, how, was, uh, how did Canada receive their healthcare workers? Was it good or positive? Yeah, it was completely positive, no issues. 
people people are people are worried actually we are uh, putting ourselves and families in you know in yes. danger by working uh, by providing health care of course actually some of the stores uh, uh, respected the health care uh, providers because we did we don't have to line up uh, for getting our groceries and you know so we got that privilege as if you show the id uh, they respect and they will be given priority so okay. that say time you don't have to line in the you don't have to stand up in the line though okay so we got complete then- So the only thing was after you finish your duty then you was to go back home and whether you were carrying the infection back home probably that was that, the issue the yeah fear. that was, that was the fear you know like um, that is that is a fear we don't want to infect our families uh, especially those who are working in the nursing homes uh, you know which is very high risk uh, um, population and very high risk you get infected so Uh, because the incubation period is like very long we don't want to take the infection to the families so that was fear and anxiety but uh, we took as a challenge and we just we wanted to provide good you know uh, care to our people so we took as a challenge and we are facing it okay all right okay thank you uh, professor so what i'll do is um i uh, because um, uh, we need to continue this discussions in the next week next week we will talk about the education what has happened to the education uh, of uh, physiotherapy that is one and uh, some uh, i would uh, request all the panelists to respond in terms of uh, what is written in the chat box regarding treatment because i don't want to bring in treatment issues here into this uh, forum and this webinar so if you can address the issues that uh, the our participants are putting on the chat box regarding treatment that would be Uh, really helpful uh, we will continue this discussion uh, in terms of um, what uh, government policies uh, in uh, what are the government policies in different countries for physiotherapy and the various guidelines that are in place or do we need as a body as a fraternity to frame new g- guidelines for physiotherapists that would be something that we need to look into and uh, probably uh, uh, has a pandemic re- this pandemic uh, changed the way that a uh, physiotherapy is practiced now because uh, professor john had said they'd become jack of all trades you had to do everything you know not only uh, what is uh, within your area of expertise but even you know uh, things that you you were actually maybe know a little bit but you know but you had to get training in it so we'll discuss all that in the next uh, webinar um i would ask uh, uh, dr derek uh, would you like to address the chat box the questions in the chat box uh yes um, i think uh, most of the questions have been answered thank you for that professor maria she's been quite active and answered most of the queries um again there's been a lot of appreciation for each of the panelists who have spoken very well giving us in the short time available a snapshot of what is happening in the country uh, as dr mary said uh, we will be continuing this uh, entire webinar series next sunday at the same time so i request uh, all the participants and those who are watching this on the youtube link to kindly log in again next week and uh, for our panelists you may also keep the some resource material ready either you can send it to dr russell or to me on email ahead of next sunday or you can even keep it uh, ready with you and post it on the chat because this is what we found has been very helpful and deeply appreciated by the participants if you can give them some uh, references or some links or maybe some reading material because there are a lot of students that you all are aware who are participating and listening in to this entire discussion so if they have the references it's always helpful for them and if you can keep that ready or email it either to me or dr russell then we can carry that forward and uh, on behalf of the uh, entire team here i'd like to take this opportunity to wish all the physiotherapists a very happy and blessed world physiotherapy day wonderful job you all are doing most of the time behind the scenes and not really appreciated especially in india may i say i'm glad to hear that other parts of the world there's appreciation that you don't have to stand in line i think we can work harder towards that and after getting 
such a huge participation here, maybe we can use this as a challenge or as a platform to ensure that the voice of physiotherapy is heard all across uh, India. So let's start a, a movement from uh, this, as Dr. Russell keeps reminding us, a solidarity that we need to hold together. So congrats to all the panelists. Thank you so much for being here, all the participants here, as well as on the YouTube, I must share. There's been a lot of appreciation for the way that you all have spoken out and given us your inputs, some of your early morning, some of your late night. Thank you so much. And we look forward to having you all next week as well. Thank you so much, you, Dr. Dr. Russell or Dr. Mary. Have a great day. Dr. Russell will uh, conclude the session. Dr. Russell, is he there? I think today has been an issue of uh, internet challenges. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Russell, are you able to hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so um, would you like to say yeah. a few words and conclude? Can you hear me? Please go ahead, sir. Now we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, um, Dr. Mary, Dr. Uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, Derek and doc, Dr. Neela Mishra and Dr. Vishnu and all the, all the distinguished panel members. Thank you very much for uh, a, a wonderful uh, program that we put in today. I'm delighted that uh, uh, there's a lot more to be, to be, um, um, to be taken through. And hopefully uh, next Sunday, we will continue the discussion, the panel discussion. And uh, again, I wish all of you um, uh, the, for the um, World Physiotherapy Day, wish you uh, a great day. And uh, you know, we uh, certainly um, want that the, uh, the great work that you all are doing should be out should be taking a much bigger role. And I'm hoping that this webinar, this uh, would bring this uh, recognition uh, to, the to the contribution that all of you are doing or making in, your, in, in, in caring for these patients. So with that, I'll, I will once again thank all our panelists and also the participants. I know that all of you are here. Uh, as many of you are on the um, on the YouTube. So we will have all of you again on Sunday, the 13th. Um, so till then, stay safe and stay very well. We'll meet you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank yeah. you. Night, good night.